Peeps, so here it is, our problem using the problem solving method and checklist. 1 through 11, here's our problem. You may have seen this already in our pre-assessment, and uh, if you got that far, it was the last one, but we're going to do that here so you can check it out. Uh, our problem is that a Cessna aircraft has a liftoff speed of 120 kilometers per hour. A, what minimum constant acceleration does the aircraft require if it is to be airborne after a takeoff run of 240 meters? How much time does it take for the aircraft to become airborne? Our first step is, as just done, to read the problem, but to then identify some keywords. So let's see. Um, one of the keywords that I'm going to point off to, actually two of them, liftoff. Liftoff is a keyword because that pretty much implies in some way that we're going to start off at a velocity original of zero, and we're going to achieve a liftoff speed or velocity at some later moment. So there's some keywords in that. Um, we know that we have a constant. We need a minimum constant acceleration. All right, it's good to know that the acceleration is constant. Therefore, our equations of motion will function here. They'll work because of the constant acceleration. OK. Um, we were told something about the takeoff run. We can identify that a little bit later. How much, how much time does it take for the aircraft to become airborne? OK, so a few things there. I think that's good for keywords that are embedded in that kind of suggest what's happening with the original velocity. So I'm going to put a big check over here on read. Let's visualize the problem. I'll make a little drawing. OK. So um, because I'm lacking space, I'm going to do a lot of erasing as well. So you may need to go back to sections in order to see them. But here is our runway. And so what we have is this beautiful plane. All right, we'll make a plane. And here's the wing. And OK, like so, the cockpit. I think a Cessna is actually bigger than that, right? Here, I'll make it a prop plane. Um, OK, so what we know is that it's on a runway. We're actually told the length of this runway. It is 240 feet, or at least it takes, let's see, everyone, a takeoff run of 240 meters. So yes, we do have something here that can be expressed. 240 meters is that distance. And so what the plane will do is accelerate from rest until it reaches a takeoff speed and becomes, well, airborne. So this plane over here, then becomes airborne, like so, and everybody's happy, and we get a little wee, like that. Pretty cool. All right. So we visualize the situation with the drawing. We know that uh, our velocity original here is going to be zero meters per second because of the key. All right. And over here, it's you know going to be some kind of v. Okay, so if we draw it, we kind of get an idea of how to set up the next step. So here is our visualization of the event. We have 240 meters in order for which to start flying through the air. So that's the physical situation. Check on visualize. So we already began step three to identify variables. So let's do that kind of formally now. Uh, I'm going to erase my wonderful diagram. But it's ingrained in our memories, I'm sure. You can always go back to this segment if you need to. Um, as suggested before from reading this liftoff situation, our V naught, original speed, zero meters per second. OK. Now, when we identify variables, it does help, though, to look at the questions and look at what variables are being asked for. Well, in part A, what minimum constant acceleration does the aircraft require? Uh, that means. That's something we're going to seek. We want to figure out A. OK, so A is who knows what. That's what we're going to find out. And in part B, how much time <clears throat> does it take for the aircraft to become airborne? That is T. We don't know the time. <clears throat> OK, um, what we're also looking at here is a liftoff speed. OK, that is given to us. That will be the final velocity. Um, actually, this isn't a question mark. That guy should have been 120 kilometers per hour. 
When I was looking, it was in glare, so I didn't see it. My apologies, but here we go. The V is 120 meter kilometers per hour. Um, so I'll put that down here. V equals 120 kilometers per hour. And the D, the displacement from, let's say we start off at location zero, our displacement would be 240 meters. So D equals 240 meters. Okay, so I think we got things in terms of uh, the variables in order to analyze this problem. So we've identified the variables that we have, okay? And I've actually done some of number four. A lot of these steps that I've separated can also be combined to some degree, but you'll see that we, uh, we tackle step number four in a little bit more detail, particularly when we look at velocity. And you'll see why in a moment, if you haven't figured it out already. So we've identified the variables, check there. We're gonna list values and units. Well, we've done that for the ones we can. But at this point, we also will convert units to the MKS system. So remember, we want MKS here, 120 kilometers per hour, not MKS. We need meters per second. So we need to convert this value so that it's meters per second. Well, we can use the train tracks. There is a short method that, um, that you, we can use to get this value. Um, pretty much you divide by 3.6, but I'll show you how we get that. Um, let's do the train tracks formally, just so we have it down. 120 kilometers per hour, setting up the train tracks like this. Let's deal with the kilometers first. Okay, one kilometer, it's the same thing as 1,000 meters, okay? Um, therefore, we get cancellation of the kilometers, leaving behind meters. So you see, the skills that we used in the first week or two of school are definitely relevant here. When we're given information expressed in units that are not MKS, we have to convert it over, very important. Um, okay, the other thing is that we have hours. And one hour is the same thing as 3,600 seconds, 3,600 seconds. I could go to minutes. I don't really need to do that. I know it's, this is the equivalent here. Equivalence is a one hour to 3,600 seconds. The hours cancel, and I've got my meters and my seconds. As we can see, this is pretty much the same thing as dividing by um, 3.6. So dividing the 120 by 3.6. So, handy, I'll do that do this on the fly. So I'm so confident in this process that I'm, I don't even have my notes. I'm just going to do it on the fly and this will be happy results, I'm sure. Um, 120 divided by 3.6 is 33.33. Okay? So this is actually in MKS units, 33 and a third, but I'll go 33.3 meters per second and that'll be sufficient for our problem. Okay. That means Step four is done. We've listed our values with proper units and in the proper system, MKS. Number five, we don't have to take care of because this is not a two-dimensional problem. Our vectors are in one direction. We're not even moving backwards. We're okay. We don't have to separate an angle. When we have angle situations, Is that that's when we would resolve vectors. There's no angle here, so we're okay to, to actually just check that right off. When we do that style of problem in the future, you'll see where this step is necessary. So we need to select equations. <clears throat> All right. Well, what I have is V naught, V, and D. And what I'm looking for is A. And I don't have T. So I think there's only one equation that satisfies that situation. And that's the fourth one on your smiley sheet. Okay, The fourth one that was derived for you, the one without time. And it looks like this. It looks like um, the equation is V squared equals V naught squared plus 2AD, like so. That's our equation. The problem is that we need to arrange it in such a way that the acceleration is going to be isolated so that we can uh, determine its value. All right? Sad map comes into play. So here we go. SADMAP is our friend, and we will use it. Okay, SADMAP. <clears throat> so, if we look at the term with acceleration, is there anything added or subtracted to it? And the answer is absolutely yes. V naught squared is added to the expression with 2AD. What do we have to do 
to uh, undo this connection? Well, you subtract out V naught from each side, all right? So what we have in the next step then is uh, V squared minus V naught squared equals 2AD. <clears throat> okay, almost there. Now what we have left is this expression. Um, we have A attached to 2 and D by multiplication. How do we do undo multiplication? Well, we need to divide both sides of the equation by 2D. So down here, what we have is um, 2A equals V squared minus V naught squared over 2D. All right, that's good. That's what we want. I'm, I like the blue color here. It's a nice shade of blue. But what I'm noticing about the blue markers in particular is that the tips get pushed in, and it doesn't happen to the other markers. My blue ones always have this little stub by the end, which is weird. I don't know why. I have to look into what it is. Um, none of the other markers want to do that. Weird, weird, weird. Okay. Um, and obviously this is just A because it's not 2A because the 2A got divided out. All right. Or the 2 got divided out leaving behind A. There's our A. Now we have not only selected our equations from before, we have also solved for the variable using symbolic algebra for part A over here. Now, 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 I know you wanted to do it earlier. No, no, no. Now we substitute numerical values. Brilliant. Here they are. Okay, what is our V? Well, we figured that the V in meters per second was 33.3. .3. So what we have here is um, A equals 33.3 .3 meters per second. That is squared. Minus V naught. Hey, that's simple. It's zero meters per second. Okay, zero meters per second. So it doesn't have any factor here, any rule. And divided by 2D, we got 2 times D of 240 meters. So it's 2 times 240 meters. Now, if you analyze this, this works out to meters per second squared when we uh, look at all the units. All right, so what's the number? Well, I got my 33.3 .3 already programmed in here, 33.3 .3 squared, right, divided by... 2 times 240. So fortunately, because the um, this was 0 meters per second, PEMDAS, which would be our next step, would involve um, working with parentheses. But here, this is pretty easy. We just have the squaring and then the, uh, not squaring, squaring uh, divided by the denominator here, 2 times 240. And what I get is about 2.31 meters per second squared. All right, we got something. 2.31 meters per second squared. Okay, so I'm gonna erase the question mark because we don't need it uh, since we have the answer as 2.31 meters per second squared. All right, um, I'm gonna box that for now here um, because that after our substitution, we've evaluated the expression. We have the presentation of results. We want to very neatly identify that this is our answer. And it's pretty obvious when you look here. You go, well, liftoff is boxed, but this is a variable with a value and, meet and units. That's what we want. OK. I'm going to um, write the discussion statement, but I'm going to save that because we also have a part B. And I would write them together. I would rather write them together. Um, OK. We still have to figure out time. And the beauty is that we have so many values, we can use any of the three equations because we have all of them. We got V naught, we got T, uh, no, we got T. We're looking for T, we, need, we have V naught, we have A, we have V, and we have D. So I'm gonna choose what I think is the simplest one, and that is the uh, first equation. First equation has everything that we need. Allow me to write that down for you. That would be um, V equals V naught plus a t. No squares, no, um, no funky stuff like that. All right, so I like this one. But we want to solve it for t. Sad map to the rescue. Again, uh, here's our expression with t. Anything subtract or added to it? Absolutely, yes. v naught is added to a t. All right, so we'll subtract v naught from both sides. So we get v minus v naught, kind of similar to before, uh, except it was squared 
equals a t. Now, um, the a is attached to the t by way of multiplication. We undo that by division. And so we get t equals v minus v naught over a. Now, all these you actually solved in the second week of school. We didn't know what we were doing then, what the value of that would be, but you got your algebraic traps back uh, in the sort of karate kid sort of way. Um, Daniel Sun had no idea that his skills would prove valuable. Here they are, proving valuable. Okay, let's now go back, and since we've solved for the variable, we substitute our numerical values in to get t, all right? So t equals v, which is um, 120, 33.3 meters per second, minus zero meters per second, divided by A, which we found in part A. See, the, when you find values, feel free to use them in other parts of the equation. Sometimes that's the only way to go. You have to find part A before you can get part B. And, and in this case, we might have been able to get around it, but I, I say we use it because we have it. All right, two point three one meters per second squared. Okay, what does this become? All right, we have 33.3 divided by 2.31 and the units. Okay, so it's about 14.41, well, 14.4 we'll call it. So 14.4 seconds, okay? So I'm gonna write that down over here as well. Now this was for, you know, ironically, part A to get A. Part B is T equals 14.4 um, seconds. 14.4 seconds. I'm gonna box this guy in. Here he goes. Beautiful thing. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> now I can write a discussion statement about what's happening over here and using these results as well to relate them back. Okay. I'm just going to erase to give me room to do that. I'll leave those two results there. We have some of the information already in the problem anyway. Okay, so basically it says that um, it requires a constant acceleration, so a constant change in velocity from zero to this value here of 120 kilometers per hour. We know it's 33.3 .3 meters per second. It, it requires a constant acceleration of 2.31 meters per second squared to increase velocity from rest, because we know it's going to start from rest, to 33.3 meters per second in order to successfully take off. Fully, whoop, writing too fast. Successfully, fully take off. All right, that's when we become airborne. All right. So that's the requirement. We need this accel constant acceleration or we're not gonna make it. And that's a bad situation. We want the plane to take off. Uh, how much time does it take? Okay, so um, it takes 14.4 seconds to become airborne. So you're gonna be in the plane for 14.4 seconds. It takes 44 seconds for the aircraft to become airborne. Um, that's the meaning, okay? The amount of time it takes on the runway before you're lifting in the air. Now there's a whole, of course, other set of physics that governs flight, forces of flight, and Bernoulli's principle, and all sorts of great things about wings, but that's for later, man. We're, we're gonna, we'll get to that at some point, but at least we can look at it in terms of the motion and, and uh, some of the requirements here about the acceleration and the time that it will take. Okay, so kind of laborious, a little bit, but it's really, really thorough. And you won't go wrong by going with this method. Again, I'd rather do fewer problems 
and do them thoroughly and correctly um, and have that be our kind of mode of operation for this year. Do things at high quality rather than at high quantity. That's what it is. All right, long, long talk, but we made it through. We got a problem done using this method. We're gonna be practicing that uh, for quite a while and um, that's what it is. So, whew, more ad.